So Ijoma Genevieve Mambalu is an Assistant Deputy Commissioner of Technology for the Department of Homeless Services, a subsidiary of the Department of Social Services in the City of New York. Ms. Mambalu is a capable, proven, and charismatic technology leader with 10 plus years as a data science, science professional. She is currently a C-level leader commanding a variety of data and analytic, an, analytics efforts as well as the technology development, design and implementation for a mission critical agency in one of the world's largest metropolis. Her astonishing rise to leadership has placed her in the trenches on myriad technological advancements and innovations that directly impact government's delivery of mission critical services for hundreds of thousands of extremely vulnerable citizens. Ms. Mambalu has stood shoulder to shoulder with some of the nation's most innovative minds and conceptualized groundbreaking digital solutions and brought them to fruition. Her work related to technology is tangible and provides a measured track record. Her story provides a realization of the principles and the perspectives that we all aspire to affirm in our world today. A first-generation first generation American citizen and a woman of African heritage who has worked her way up from an entry-level data scientist to a design and analytics technology executive at the helm of a multi-million dollar office with hundreds of technolog technologists for a multi-billion dollar agency in a world-renowned urban hub. A hidden figure in, in one of the most consequential sectors of today, Ms. Mambalu is an example of women's achievement and what is still a male-dominated field. So let's all welcome Ms. Mambalu. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know who wrote that, but <laughs> it's, 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 it sounds it sounds so polished. Um, Thank you all so much, um, you know, for um, for attending this. First of all, um, the, every, the folks who are not affiliated with TouchLink who are in attendance, we thank you. We know you could be spending your eight p.m. on a Thursday somewhere else, but you are with us, so thank you. Um, I do want to also express gratitude. Um, to all of the folks at TouchLink, including Sister Yawande, who um, contacted me, a, you know, some time ago about this, and I remember telling her, well, well how do you want me to phrase this? Just, just do your thing. <laughs> so thank you so much for the opportunity. I know we've got quite a bit of time, so I did prepare a presentation, and I hope I can share my screen. Um, says so if if the if this host disabled participant screen sharing. So uh, who's the I, host? I, I can if you can, screen. I can share your presentation. Oh, I can now. Okay, can you please? And then I'll just sort of, you know, um, let you know. Where, and I have another computer here, so I can sort of use this version if anything. But you know, I can let you know when to help me go on. Okay. Um, but I prefer. Pre Prepared uh, while Wonu is pulling it up, I prepared a deck because it's important for me um, not only to be respectful of your time, but to ensure that I don't, you know, sort of go on. I can be like, this is the only time I'll bring up political um, stuff here, but I can go on and on like Biden, right? So we know how he likes to talk. So I want to make sure that I don't ramble on, which is why I have a presentation today. So that's the <laughs> most political. Oh, no, I've got actually another slide that talks about a little bit of politics. So maybe a few minutes of politics. Um, so um, so I've been introduced, and so there's no need for me to uh, focus on this. Slide. One thing I will say, though, that my affiliation with TouchLink, while I do work for the city of New York, my affiliation with TouchLink is that I, I am on the board of advisors. I was um, you know, I, I'm honored to actually have been uh, invited to be a part of it. So uh, when I was asked to do this speaking engagement, I knew that I absolutely, it's not only an honor, but it's, it's, it's something that is dear to me, um, given sort of my own experience um, with it, as well as um, the experience of people close to me. So 
Um, the topic today is sexual assault. I think everyone knows that um, the month of October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, so I will be talking about sexual assault. I think this is not, this is a topic that many of you um, are probably already familiar with. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll be sort of talking about it from the context of data. Um, I'll be talking about it from the context of just our culture, our cultural milieu, and, and how culture um, sort of explains away sexual assault in ways that are not always great. And then I'll, I'll end with some, some, of, some ways that we can actually help um, either individuals who have um, experienced this unfortunate um, ordeal or um, if you have experienced it and need help. So, next slide. So um, throughout this presentation um, I do have a, a call to action. I think it's, a, it's important to always have this information handy. Um, TouchLink is indeed after all a, a, a nonprofit organization dedicated wholeheartedly to supporting, helping victims of domestic violence, of which sexual assault is one of them. So there is a, there is a hotline number, 1-866-682-4626. Again, that number is 1-866-682-4626. I will repeat it several times because I do know that everyone doesn't have a copy of this presentation, but I think it's important that while we are talking about sexual assault, it's important that people know that um, there's help and it's, it's only a phone call away. And so I'll provide some background information. Um, and you know, the first slide, um, just sort of really quickly, the slide before this one um, introduces a piece of statistic, um, which is, I remember looking at this data and thinking, oh my God. Um, and it is still true that, you know, over, you know, nearly more than half of uh, sexual assaults um, are not reported. And we'll go into a little bit of why some of that is the case. Um, the image on the right, and I think you don't really see a lot of it, but, it, you know, the first part um, you can see because it's in really big text. Um, and this is sort of one way that our culture sort of talks about, uh, explains the way um, sexual assault. You've heard people, or maybe you've seen movies where, you know, the guy says, well, the girl is a girl that that waist that is easy to hook up with, right? I think with many of us, uh, some of us have been through college and we've heard that. But if you see the, the text at the bottom, right, that is the call to action. That is how you can go from a very bad situation to a good one, which is that this individual decided, I made sure her friend got her out of there because she was in no shape to be going home with some guy. So you see a few of these sort of messages throughout, but you know, I, I wanted to sort of call your attention to it, okay? So we'll talk a little bit about healthy sexual experiences and grounded it in data. Um, and of course, if you have your questions, please stop me at any point in time. This is a very relaxed um, uh, environment. So if you do have a question, I uh, know we are on Zoom, so you can, there's a raise your hand feature, and when you, as the expert moderator that she is, we'll call, we'll pull my coattail to let me know that there's a question. Um, but you can always sort of interrupt as well if you do have a question. So um, we'll talk a little bit about healthy sexual experiences. This person here in this picture is me. <laughs> um, and the individual in this picture um, is, is my fiance. Um, you know, and I put this picture as I was preparing this presentation because I wanted to, I wanted to talk about healthy sexual experiences, right? While we're talking about sexual assault, I think sometimes people think of, um, don't sort of think of the it, right? That sexual assault, but don't realize that there's a, there's a journey, right? There's a sort of process that gets you that sexual assault. It didn't have to be a sexual assault, right? It could have started off as not that, right? So you ask questions like, is it fun? Is it right? Uh, does that person that you're engaging with agree? Do they even want to, right? Um, but we know that many people do not um, have healthy sexual experiences. They don't go through sort of that process of asking, right? You saw the image before of the, of the young man who 
belief that because the individual was wasted, you know, that, you know, that they, you know, that it, it was worth it, but it shouldn't be that way, right? So we don't, you know, some individuals who are, who do um, engineer these sexual assaults, um, don't sort of go through this thought process, right, of um, checking themselves um, or really grounding themselves, right? So many of us don't get to experience these healthy sexual experiences. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about why that's the case. But before we do, we'll move on to the next slide and talk about just defining what sexual assault is, right? I think some of us may believe that we do know, but there's quite a bit that might alarm you, right? So sexual assault is any sexual activity and it doesn't have to actually end in sex. That's something that's very important to know. Um, it's just about any activity that is sexual in nature. So it could be inappropriate touching, it could be a sexual intercourse that you did not agree to. I think that's what people commonly think about when they hear sexual assault or sexual violence. They think about the actual act of sex, but it's, it's, it's not just that. It's just, you know, you could be walking and someone touches you in a way that it's not appropriate, or you could be sitting down, right? And someone sort of touches you in a way that it's not appropriate, right? Um, it's also oral or vaginal or anal uh, penetration, right? Um, attempted rape, rape, the act of rape itself and child molestation. These are some of the categories that fall into sexual assault. So other types of sexual assault can be verbal, right? Person doesn't even have to touch you to actually, you know, assault you, right? Uh, it could be verbal. It could be visual, right? Um, it could be just anything that forces a person to join in unwanted sexual contact or, or attention. So some examples are when someone watches private sexual acts, right? Um, especially if it's unbeknownst to the other person. So you, you know, an individual who may be in their apartment or something, right? And has a, a vantage point to another person's apartment, but that person's room, right? Where they're able to see when they're undressing. That's, you know, that's one example, right? And then there's also other examples where, you know, people expose themselves in public. That is sexual assault. Um, and of course, incest and other types of sexual harassment, right? Rape is also a very common um, form of sexual assault, and it can happen anywhere. It could happen at home, in environments where you're comfortable, or in environments that are, you know, that are not, you know, familiar. Um, like maybe a bar or a nightclub or someone else's place. Um, and it can happen, you know, by strangers or even people you know. Um, so those are just sort of common, you know, a common definition of sexual assault and some examples. So now we'll go into a few statistics. I think, you know, um, in preparing this presentation, there's just a ton of data out there about assault, assault in the, in, and this is, you know, data in the United States, right? So I wanted to pull numbers that were just so jarring, numbers that just, and not only just the unacceptable, but it's just, it's just mind blowing, right? Um, so the DOJ, DOJ a few years ago estimated that every 2.5 minutes, about every three minutes, someone in the United States has been assaulted. That's huge. That's, you know, we've been talking for about 24 minutes, right? That's a lot of people that have probably experienced some form of assault. So think about that um, and, and sort of how pervasive um, sexual assault is, right? Um, another sexual, sexual assault statistic is, uh, you know, the FBI estimates um, that one in 10 men will be sexually assaulted during their lifetime. There's sort of this myth, and I'll go into that later on, that sexual assault is sort of, you know, like just it's a, it, it happens to women, but men get sexual assaulted quite a, quite a bit, right? And so the, you know, the, the data from the FBI was just really interesting, and I needed to illustrate that here because I think more often than not, you know, not only do we just think about sexual assault affecting women and children, but we also think, that, you know, we also know that there are oftentimes organizations that, are, that cater to, um, you know, victims of sexual assault that tend to be very um, 
you know, female dominated. And then that really shouldn't be the case. I think that we do need more male representations, especially with organizations like TouchLink, for instance, is doing such great work um, for victims of domestic violence. We do need more, more men um, to be engaged because, you know, um, even if you're not a victim, even if you may not know someone who's a victim, um, if you have children or, you know, you may have a daughter, right? Or you may have cousins or sisters or aunts or, or, or brothers or, and so on, right? You may have a family member that's a victim. So, um, you know, this, this, this number really stuck, 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 um, stuck out to me. Um, the National Center for Policy and Analysis estimates that, you know, about 25%, so marital rape accounts for about 25% of all rapes. That affects well over 75,000 women year over year. So 25% of rapes in these United States of America, right, is from, you know, in, 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 from, 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 from a person who is in a committed marital relationship, right? So that's, 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 that's jarring. Um, so if we continue on to number four, the World Health Organization, um, you know, you know, demonstrates or at least illustrates that victims of sexual assault are about four times more likely to be suicidal, right? So we've talked quite a bit about the sort of incidences, right, of sexual assault, right? The fact that it affects men and affects women and, you know, and so on. But then there's the consequences of sexual assault. So it's not just enough that the assault happened. The long-term effects, right, of sexual assault. So this is one of them. Um, you know, the fact that suicide is much more pervasive in individuals who have been sexually assaulted. Same with the WHO number five. Um, has another statistic that is worth mentioning that victims of sexual assault are three times more likely to suffer from from depression another consequence of sexual assault right so and the last one um is and i thought this was very interesting because i wanted to be able to show the juxtaposition between men and women right the doj a few years ago estimated that one in five women and one in 33 men have experienced an attempted or completed rape so the idea that men don't get raped right that's false right um so these numbers i think you know are worth um, you know, looking back at a little bit later, I think if there if there if there are folks on this um, in this virtual rally, I like the word um, virtual rally, um, that um, feel like they don't know how to or know what to do. I think looking at these numbers should be helpful so that you can it can incite some sort of need to, um, to, 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 to do something or to help. And I'll, we'll talk about that in a second because I think it's, it's very, or maybe in a few minutes, I think it's very important um, for you all to know some of the ways that you can help individuals who have been uh, victims of sexual assault. Okay. Next slide. Questions so far? No? Yay? Okay. All right, we'll continue on. More data. I love data because um, I feel like, you know, when I was, I, someone told me, my professor, I remember telling me uh, something, I, you know, a long time ago um, in staff school, it's like data never lies. And it's true. It never lies. Um, you, you know, it's, 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 it's so fundamental, especially when you're trying to effect change. Um, and so I get excited when I see these numbers as jarring and, and sad and heartbreaking as they are. It, it, it allows organizations like TouchLink to be able to not only be effective, right, in the change that they're, that they're making, but to be able to garner the type of support that is needed to ensure that um, there are less and less and less victims of, of, of sexual assault. So more data. Um, so, 76%, uh, so this is data is actually from the California Coalition Against Sexual Assault, and I believe it's 2019, oh, I'll, I can check and come back. 76% um, of women, so just a little bit over three in four women 
reported sexual harassment ever in their lifetime. So this question was about, have you ever experienced sexual harassment in your lifetime? And the end, so it's about three out of four women so have experienced some sexual violence in their lifetime. So I think, you know, if we, if we, if we wanted to take stock of the individuals who are in this, in this virtual rally today, right? Um, if there are more than four women, at least some of us have been victims of sexual assault. That's crazy, right? So, um, so that's one statistic. Another one, bottom left, 35% of men, one in three, have reported verbal sexual harassment. So while it hasn't been physical, right, um, verbal sexual harassment ever in your lifetime, right? 58% um, of women, top right quadrant, uh, that's about nearly three in five, have reported physically aggressive sexual harassment ever in their lifetimes, and those include unwelcome touch, showing genitals, those kinds of aggressive uh, sexual, um, sexual um, um, harassment. And the last being 25% of men, one in four, have reported those same statistics. So while the women are a little bit more, the men are about a, you know, a, a quarter, right, have reported um, those same types of, um, of experiences. So we've gone through the data, right, um, and we are going now into culture. What our society has, how our society has enabled, has fostered a lot of these types of experiences, how it's sometimes Maybe some people could say most times, made it okay, right? Um, yeah, I think some of you have heard, you know, boys will be boys, you know. Um, how is it that, you know, this person, your cousin could have assaulted you, right? Dear your cousin, for, you know, for Pete's sake, right? How could they have done that? That doesn't make any sense. How could your husband or your wife could have assaulted you, right? So we've heard those, right? Can be, are you sure? So we'll go into those, some, some of those a bit. But one really great image that I found on the World Wide Web, thanks to Sister Yowande, is society mm -hmm. teaches us, don't get raped. Don't get raped. But they don't teach us, don't rape. You see the way that's mm -hmm. different? Mm -hmm. Don't get raped is so different, miles away from don't rape. If only we could be taught not to rape, not to commit sexual violence. I, I think those numbers we've talked about would be a little bit different. Another uh, image to the right here, right? Um, you know, this young man says, it was 2 a.m. I offered her a rising team. Hey, you never know. So things could have gone south. But if you look at the text at the bottom, it says, if the guy, if the guy who'd been after my friend all night might try something, no way was I taken off without her. So this is where, again, it, it, it didn't go last. He decided to actually effect change there. So mm -hmm. there's always something we could do, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So more about culture, more about society. The next slide, please. How society views sexual assault. So we've started to talk about that right? I'm Nigerian, right? So right there, it's a very sort of, it's not matriarchal, it's patriarchal. So it's very like, you know, the man rules and that's all you got, right? Um, and so imagine if you're in a marriage or if you're in an environment where you are a victim as a woman of sexual assault, you may hear some things like, oh, it's a personal matter, it's a family issue, let's call a meeting. Let's call a meeting and talk about it. Let's talk call a meeting and talk about it. It's really nothing for other people to know about it. Let's discuss it internally, right? Yeah. But, hey, Joma, you know, we've heard, yes. I just want to interject. If anybody have any question why IJ is talking, yeah. can you just, just post it in the chat? You can type it and post it in the, on the chat and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Do we have any questions so far? Or you can okay. raise your hand. Yeah, raising hands always works. <laughs> so, um, how many of us, so actually, 
you know, now that we've got taken a little break, I think, you know, um, how many of us, I'll make this a little bit um, different, just bear with me for a second. How many of us have actually heard, I'm going to put it this way, that um, sexual assault is just not something that should be discussed. It's something that is just, it's a personal matter, right? It's just a family thing, or it's just a thing that you deal with behind closed doors. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times they tell you keep it at home, keep it quiet. You know, don't spread it out. What would people say? Hmm. Right. Mhm. Mm yeah. So, I think a lot of times, um, especially for women, if you get raped, it's more your fault. What were you wearing? Mm -hmm. What did you go to? I mean, a couple of years ago, while I was still a teenager. Um, a friend of my elder brother's, they used to come around to my house and someone gave me a dress that was really nice. It was long and flowing and everything. And I felt I looked good in it. I liked it. And this guy that day told me that the next time I come to your house and you wear this, I will rape you and nothing would happen. You know? And of course, I was like, how can you rape me in my house? Are you mad? But at the back of my mind, there was, it was like, that was something that was, that sank deep that, okay, maybe I'm going to have to stop wearing this all together or find a way to make it less, to make myself look less alluring. So I just want to share that. Yeah. 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 No, I remember. And that, that's not, that's not, and that's not okay. Right. It's not okay because you know, of course, we know there's a double standard, right? A man could wear what a man wants to wear and a woman, right, would wear something that is appealing because she feels good and, a, and someone sees it or would say something else about it. So that's not, you know, that's obviously not okay. But it's not surprising, right? Because, you know, in the same context that you hear boys will be boys, you know, you hear that sort of sentiment, right, that, well, why did you wear what you wore? You were asking for it, right? It didn't have to be that revealing. Not that you you wore it because you liked how you looked in it. You weren't wearing it for other people. You just liked how you looked in it. It doesn't call for anything. And it's a, our cultural milieu, our culture sort of, you know, we, we, we forget that there's a lot about societal structures or stru like family structures and 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 our and our community that really foster a lot of those sayings, a lot of those. If you wear it, I'll rape you. The next time I come here, I'll rape you in your own house, right? Um, and so, obviously, if if we didn't foster those types of talk, right, that individual would not feel comfortable saying that, right? Imagine if you said that to him, right? Um, any other experiences? Um, Ijoma, so there's a question in the chat box. Yes. Um, can you, it says, can you provide examples of verbal sexual assault? Okay. So, I'm going to act something out. So, um, you know, don't have to be, you know, I, I'm just sort of probably just dressed head tie and everything, you know, no makeup, nothing, right? Walking down the street and maybe I have my earpiece on and I'm listening to something. I'm always listening to NPR, you know? Um, and someone is like trying to say something, but I'm not hearing them. So I turned up and I said, and I say, and they say, hey, you're looking mighty fine today. I may just ignore it and keep going. And they say, well, look at how your ass is shaped, right? Why are you wearing those pants? They're hugging up your ass in the way that it should not be hugging up, right? Like you, you, really, you really shouldn't be wearing pants like that if you don't want to, if you don't want to get the kind of, um, you know, if you don't want to get the kind of, get, uh, you know, get noticed by me. Those are verbal assaults. That's not okay. You don't know me from Adam. Why are you talking about the way the pants, my, my ass puts in the pants, right? 
or maybe I'm not wearing, maybe, maybe I decide, maybe I, you know, I go out and it's a very cold day. And, you know, maybe, you know, like, because it's a very cold day, you know, like maybe like one of my breasts, my nipples are like sticking out, not sticking out, but you know, they get cold, right? And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and someone notices that and says something about that. That's okay. Those are verbal assaults. You're, you're being not only invasive, but you're coming into, you know, the space of an individual that you're not supposed to. You're maybe at work. You're by the water cooler. You're trying to get water. Maybe you try to bend down to get the water and someone, and someone, it could be a woman, walks past by, girl, your ass is sticking out of that skirt. That's not okay. And depending on how far they go, that could be construed as verbal assault. Uh, you know, so. I, I'm sorry. I just, before the thought leaves me, I just want to ask a question. Yes. So yeah, when you're talking about verbal assault, I know all of us here right now, we're all in the United States of, of America where um, we can easily be like um, freedom of expression, freedom of everything. But I, I guess my question is like, shouldn't we also like have responsibility in considering the environment where we are, you know, like, of course, the kind of clothes you wear to the beach, you shouldn't be found wearing that to the office, for instance. And uh, I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there since we're talking about um, sexual assault, because, you know, sometimes you may, uh, even as women, sometimes we actually kind of like call out some people who are kind of like close to us that ah, what you're wearing is, mm, it's a little bit too revealing or something. Is that sexual assault? I mean, and in some cases, how much of it, because if you cannot even, I don't know how to really put this across, but. No, I understand where you're, I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from. Um, so you're saying a couple of things. Um, regardless, you're saying a couple of things, wearing a, a, a bikini to the office. Who, who, whoever does that, there's, there's something going on. Um, but if they end up getting assaulted, that's not okay. They didn't ask for it because of what they wore. That's not okay. Because what they're wearing doesn't mean anything. I think we, we get so stuck on, on the fact that they're showing a part of themselves. They're showing their, you know, their, a part of their, like who they are. And maybe it's just like, this is their identity, right? Um, in the same way, individuals want to be called, like, you know, with, with um, gender pronouns now, individuals want to be called by your gender pronoun. That is your identity. And maybe, you know, like, Hi, extreme is their They meant to cut you off. Oh. Yeah, sorry. My name is Tawa. And I think um, what she's trying to say, or like what I understand by what, by the question that was asked earlier was that, where do we draw the line between a compliment and someone um, being rude and then sex, sex, sexual, assault, sexual assault? So someone sees you like, you know, I am dressed. Like sometimes, you know, I go to the office and I look in the mirror before going out and you know I'm an African woman I am you know nicely shaped and nicely um carved and a, f a female co-worker looks at me and be like girl you're looking good you know and then sees you again and like says the same thing and like you know being more I'm gonna put it it then, it then starts to get a little bit uncomfortable, but then it comes across like a, like a compliment, but then it's really not a compliment. You know, where do you, how do you de differentiate that and how do you like draw the line from, okay, it's a compliment to being rude and then sexual assault? Right, right. I mean, all, you know, so there's parts of that, what you've just described, right, that um, I mean, ultimately, it, 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 there are individuals who have a higher tolerance for those things, right? You, you described a woman could, could, compliment, could say something to you and you initially took it, Tawa, right? Your name is Tawa, right? You, you initially take it as a compliment, right? Yes. And then they say it again. And then you're like, mm, I don't know how to feel about that. 
right? Yeah. You right there already feeling uncomfortable about it. Initially, you thought of it. It was a little odd, you said, but you thought of it as, you know, okay, they're complimenting me, right? But then they yeah. say it again, and now you're uncomfortable, right? Yeah. So they say it again. You could say something and say, you know, I don't feel comfortable about this. You know, I don't feel, I, you know, when you initially thought of it as a compliment, which is very, very different from where you, where you just think of it as, whoa, you're telling me, right? You're telling me because words are words, right? Mm -hmm. To your point, yeah. you know, like it could be, oh, wow, you look so, you look so nice. You look so cute. I Man, I've complimented women before, right? But I don't go into detail about how do you your shape is and the dress they're wearing i don't go into detail about how they your whatever i don't know like i don't go into those details because it's not i'm not you know like I, it's, it's just it's a compliment right so there's mm -hmm. there's there's yeah. degrees of where you really start to cross the line and i think you know like you you know because you start to feel uncomfortable right yeah. right yeah. you start to say ah, this is not <laughs> quite right you know yeah. and yeah. we energy doesn't lie right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there's things like i might see you tower right and you say wow sis you're wearing that dress honey mm -hmm. right yeah. and yeah. you might hear that i'm like oh thank you well i could be like oh damn girl look at the way your ass is sticking out of that dress i like that words <laughs> let them know <laughs> yeah right I got the two very. Person. That is correct. Ve that is, yeah. Right. Very, very, very different. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, but then, you know, like, coming from, but then, though, coming from a female to another female, you know, if it was a guy, you would be like, you know, you would have that. You, you, if a guy wouldn't even say that to you, except you have some type of, like, you know, in my opinion, like a coworker wouldn't say yeah. that to me as a guy. But then coming from a oh, female, you know, no, no, uh, yeah, no, no, I, I, just, no. I, I have been hit on, I, I have been hit on by women out, I have been hit on by women in the office before, yeah, trust and believe, yes, and yeah, so no, like you know, since it's coming from another woman, like another female, how do you like, you know, I, I don't know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's if it's a guy, say. you can accurately yeah. say, okay, that is stepping out of line. But if it's a female yeah. to you, you know, it gets, mm -hmm. it gets mm -hmm. a little tricky in a way. Yeah. Uh, well, no, you were going to say something, or I think I heard you say something. Oh, someone else. Who's, who's, on, who's not on mute? Someone was trying yeah. to I say think something. Was one oh, Ayula. Oh, what, oh, sorry. What's <laughs> from, um, like, a man to a woman, you know, in terms of, like, mm, mm, stuff like that. Sometimes it happens women to women. I mean, we do have lesbians. I mean, there was a job, there was a place where I was working where quite a number of the women were lesbians. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't ask you to please help me with my zipper unless I know you're married with children and then I know for sure you are not a lesbian, at least you're heterosexual. So sometimes mm -hmm. it, it, that does happen. So the issue of um and even in the office i mean i've i've seen that done that i'm not talking about someone else's experience i'm still talking about mm -hmm. me i mean like someone kind of like mm, if you this and everything of course it's sexual harassment but then i was in nigeria i was with the u.s consulate but you know i was able to kind of like <laughs> stop it if it's a joke stop it right now and of course um we have incidences of you being undressed with someone's eyes you know, the person is looking at you and you can literally see that the, ma the person is imagining doing all sorts of things. So this is your sexual assault. Is, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Words are, words are very, um, words are very, uh, you know, they carry weight. And I think we just have to be, we have to be, um, you know, like Tower was saying, um, you know, we have to be perceptive, right? You you have to be able to sort of, everyone has like her boundaries, you know, Tao's boundaries are really different from mine. I might hear something that I think is crap and think, and she might, you know, Tao might not. I'm like, oh yeah, no, let's, you 
you know, you know, like, or vice versa, right? So we just have to just ultimately, I, I think it's both objective, but at the same time, it's also, right, it's also, it's, it's mostly, I, I, I think, um, you know, there, 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 there are times where you actually just know that what you're doing is not right, at least how you're saying it is not right, and you shouldn't cross yeah. that line. So, um, but, so that's so it's good we're getting some some conversation so that's yeah. that's good of, uh, i think we're <laughs> running out of time but i also want to add something you know it might even be somebody showing you inappropriate video r rated mm -hmm. or how do you call it and you are not consenting to it you don't like it and you actually mm -hmm. ask for it to be stopped but they are not stopping and they are just showing mm -hmm. you all this type of video so that's mm -hmm. you know really harassing you yeah yeah, yeah, that that so, goes to the good. yeah no that that yeah. that so that that goes to the example we had before that um, so sexual assault it could be verbal it could be visual right um, you know it doesn't just have to be rape or attempted rape it could be a lot of things it could be touching right so anyway so we'll move on um, another sort of view you know of you know culture or society is that there's just no way you can prevent sexual assault. So it's up to you to what? Protect yourself. I think Ayula, Ayula mentioned some of that too, like about the individual who came to her house and said, you know, if you, if I come back here again, this is what's going to happen, right? So you, you meet, like you have to protect yourself because clearly you're not protecting yourself wearing what you are wearing. Um, so, so that's, that's another view. Sexual assault only happens to women and children and not men. I think we've talked about that in the statistics that we saw, um, about men and the way it implicates men. Um, another myth is, are you sure it was sexual assault? He's your uncle or he's your husband or he's your cousin. It just couldn't have been. Uh, and the last is how can a woman rape a man? Man up. You're a man. Man up. Right? Um, and I think especially in, you know, I'm Nigerian and in my culture, you know, I know, you know, that because it's very sort of male dominated, um, there are times where individuals who are men experience what they can't explain um, and don't oh, a, want to think that it's sexual assault. Ijama, I don't yeah. want to rush you, but you have like two more minutes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, we're getting really excited here. So let's, let's breathe through this. Let's go on to the next slide. Can I go or no? Okay. All right. So um, I know this is a very important one, how society plays a role in victimizing victims. Um, again, the belief that assault is a private matter. We've talked about that. The fear of disbelief. No one is ever going to believe it happened to me. Right, um, you know, and um, you know the idea that it's you just you just want to suppress it like it never happened. That's the third one. Um, not okay. Believe that the assault was it's really not that serious, right? Is it really even assault? Like it's not that serious to report. The desire to protect the perp. I don't want to get them in trouble. Black women do this a lot, and if we had more time, we'll unpack that. But we don't have time. The fear of physical or so, uh, social retaliation from the perpetrator, just scared that they'll do something to you. Um, next slide, please. And just this is going to be quick, but this is just want to give you some visual representations of how society plays a role in unaccountability. I think these faces you all are familiar with is you all you all live in these United States of America, uh, these men that have claims of sexual assault, some of whom have gone on, on, on prosecuted, if that's a word, one of whom has, the individual in the bottom left. And then um, I'll breeze through the last one. I know I have 60 seconds, so I'll breeze through the next slide, please. Because I think this last one is really important. Um, again, if you need help, call TouchLink hotline 1-866-682-466. Next slide. I think I've been talking about, let me go. I've been talking about these quite a bit. So you see sort of she was on her own. So I made, I made my move, but you know, it can become very well 
that you know that you know to, that you decide that you're going to do something about it and, and alerting her friends right so i've been talking quite a bit about this the make your move um organization they have very great visuals um about how you can be um that you can leverage if you wanted to sort of do more around sexual assault i i encourage you to go to their site um now how you can help lots of ways you can but i highlight only four the so next slide please um Funding, 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 funding. TouchLink needs more of your wallet. <laughs> so to the extent that you can donate, 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 it's very important um, to donate to organizations like TouchLink. Please ask your congressmen or congresswomen, you know, this is election time. So ask them to direct funding to um, services, organizations that provide sexual assault services, it's really those that have to do with VAWA, the Violence Against Women Act. Um, bottom left quadrant, volunteer. As I can say it enough, it's very important. I know touch link to say, yeah, one day will tell you, she's always looking for volunteers. Um, so to the extent, even if it's managing your social media account, right? Please, you know, just sort of think about a way that you can um, help and uh, you can email them info at touchlink.org to learn more. Um, top, top right, don't stand by when you're made aware of sexual assault. I always say that. You call attention to it. Um, if it's happening, you know, before it happens, when it's happening, and then after it happens. And then last is support. If you know anyone who's been a victim or if you have, um, you know, someone really close to you, just sort of try to um, help by just making sure that they're aware of all of the right information. But more importantly, there's a fear factor that comes with sexual assault. It's very important that you understand that and you just let the individual or individuals know that you're just there to be supportive, to listen and to talk. And that's all folks. Um, I appreciate the time that you have given me. I know the last two minutes was rushed. Thank you, Esther, for pulling my coattail. Um, and thank you all for having me. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you very thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my pleasure. Awesome. So um, we were supposed to have um, a testimony, um, but I don't, we literally have two more minutes. So I don't know, um, D.Y. You can still go ahead. Test. You can go ahead and give your testimony. Okay. So, um, so this next section is a bit personal um, because it's, my experience with um, sexual violence and my survivor story of childhood molestation and being raped at the age of 15 um, and also facing sexual assault while on a date while I was in college and as a child between the ages of five and eight um, my parents used to allow us to go to a family friend's house he was a little bit older than my older brother um, and he will always want to play games. These games obviously involve um, different sexual contacts, um, touching him in different places and him doing the same to me. And for years, I never shared the story. Um, and I had buried it so deep um, to the point where I even forgot about it. And it really wasn't until this year that I shared the story with my closest friend and DY um, and they really helped me walk through it. Um, and one of my mentors who walk, helped me walk through it and really start pro that process of healing and that process of overcoming. Um, at the age of 15, however, um, once again, I was set up by, um, by a friend and I was to meet this gentleman um, downtown North and we went to his house. Um, when we went, like on the way to his house, um, I just had the urge, like, I don't want to do this. I just don't want to do this. Um, I didn't say anything while we were riding there, but when we got into his room, I just had the feeling of, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Um, so then while, like, while everything happened, like I was laying there, he was on top, um, and I just got up and I said, no, I don't want to do this. And he said, we can either do this the hard way or the easy way. And then he, and with me, um, I had the fear of getting hit. And I knew I did not want to get hit. So I just was like, okay, let me just lay down, do whatever he wants to do, and just get up and go. 
till this day, I don't remember how I left the room and got into the bus. I just remember sitting in the back of the bus, looking out the window, silently crying to myself, convincing myself that this just, got, I did not get raped. This did not happen to me. Like, I'm not one of those girls. And where that thought came from, I have no idea. But I just remember thinking to myself, that's not who I am. Like, no, it's my fault. It has to be my fault because I went there. You know, I went into his room. And once again, for years, I never shared that story with anyone. Um, I didn't feel like I had a safe place to share that story. Um, until years later when I was in college, I shared it with um, my best friend at the time. And while I was in college, um, I was asked on a date by a gentleman. Um, we went to the mall, we had coffee, it was a great day. And on the way home, he decided that he wanted to try and get on top of me. And then I just pushed him off. And unfortunately, I didn't have a car of my own. So I had to stay in the car and wait for him to drive me home. And I say all of this to say that oftentimes stories are not shared. And especially when it comes to children, when they feel as though they don't have a safe environment to give that story where they went, because for me, I didn't feel like I had a safe environment. Um, I'm African, um, I'm from Ghana, and most of us are, and we know the culture of you say something that's not right, you get a whooping. And that was the culture in my house. Um, whenever you stepped out of line, you got a whooping. So the fear of it's my fault, the fear of my parents are going to punish me, the fear of people are going to judge me, um, the fear of I am going to be considered less than, I'm not going to be liked, um, I'm not worth it, and I did it to myself, was all there. Um, and w my plea is that regardless if you're a parent, if you're a friend, if you know someone who has a young one, who knows, like anyone, just be a safe space. Be a safe space for where people can share their stories, where people can come to you and say, hey, this happened without fear of judgment. Um, because for me, I held on to my pain and the trauma and the effects of those three situations for years, years. And it's literally just this year, 2020, that I'm starting my healing process and overcoming it, speaking to my mentors, seeking out therapy, um, because till this day, I have issues with the opposite sex. I have issues with people who stand behind me. And it's really hard for me to connect. It's really hard for me to even build genuine friendship because of everything that happened. Um, so the plea and the reason why um, I'm sharing this story is to let people know, like, be open, be safe, watch the words that come out of your mouth. I know we're African and sometimes we can speak harshly without even realizing, but be very mindful of what you say because you never know what's happened to someone before they said hello to you. And you always want to be a safe space, especially for your children especially for your children. You want to be a safe space for your children. Um, it's a plea to my parents, let them know that you love them at home because when they know that home is a place of love, when they know that home is a place of security, they will always come back home and they will always open up to you. Um, and that's my quick story. I took too much of your time. Just wanna say thank you all for listening. And um, if you have any questions, go ahead. Wow, thank you. Powerful. Um, I have a question, and I think it's for Ijoma. Um, I just want to know. I don't, don't. I don't think. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned this. Um, how can we prevent um, sexual assault? And if someone has gone through that assault, how can they bounce back or heal from the experience? Thank you for your question. And before I even answer, um, Kemi, Kemi, right? Asker, I applaud you. I applaud you for telling your story. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. And it just, it takes a lot. And I applaud you. Um, you know, I think Kemi was the one who just asked the question. I think hearing, there are many people that are not like Esther. And I say that I'm just like, I, I felt, I felt, I feel what you're feeling. I felt 
how, I mean, the, the weight that it takes, right? Because I think everyone needs to understand, and I think if you haven't been a victim of sexual assault, it's so important to say it takes a lot for you to even come forward. And sometimes it's just something. It's something that happens. It's a trigger. You see something and you remember, especially if you suppress it for so long. Um, shame makes you suppress it. Um, you know, the, the fact that you, that you may, you know, that you just can't believe that something like this could even happen to you. Um, you know, it makes you sort of suppress it. And then you remember and something happens and you remember it all comes coming back to you. Um, and, and, and it, it, it almost feels like you regret because for so long, you never believed that something like this could have happened. So Esther, I applaud you. I applaud you so much for, um, you know, for speaking up. Uh, it takes a lot of guts to, to, to sort of to, 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 to tell your story. So I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so Kemi, you know, preventing sexual um, violence uh, takes an army, right? Like I think, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of, um, you know, um, roots, right? Society, there's a lot that society does that creates conditions where sexual violence thrives, right? Some of the pictures that I shared that I ran through earlier shows just, you know, history of individuals who, and I know they are high profile, but some of us have individuals in our families who um, either been victims of sexual assault or have actually been the perps and no one said anything. Some people knew that it was happening, right? Um, there's, you know, and then there's also bar 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 barriers for victims right um and survivors like esther thank god right um in speaking up and in access accessing services accessing healing accessing justice right so there's a lot that society is yet to do or can do so that's why the collective that touchlink has here today is so important that's why touchlink is so important that's why Supporting TouchLink is so important, right? Because they're, they're like an army of, I don't know, to say, yeah, Wendy, how many do you have working for you? Not much, right? Who are trying to help the Esthers of the world? Who are trying to help the Ijamas of the world, right? Who are trying to help people who just want to be able to stop, you know, to be able to sort of access services to help them heal, to help them get justice. And sometimes the justice isn't even for the person that did what to them. It's for themselves. It's for them to be able to feel whole again, right? So I think, Kemi, to answer your question, one is, you know, preventing, you know, means support, supporting organizations like TouchLink. Um, if it's not through your time, right, um, it's through financial means because you're using um, oftentimes they bootstrap, right, to be able to provide services to people who don't have the means to be able to get out of the, you know, sort of situation that, they, that they're in. Sometimes it's a lot of counseling, right, that is needed to be able to help individuals who have been victims of sexual assault um, to be whole again. Right. Um, and I think in terms of what you can also do is support. It's having forums like this where you can be or hear, you're listening, you're learning, you're hearing Esther's story, you're sympathizing with her. That goes a long way, right? Um, what you can do also is, you know, um, you know, I know there's a thing called COVID that prevents us from being able to do these walks, but whenever those start back up again, it's, 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 it's going on these sort of rallies and, and, and walks in, in, in support of, um, you know, organizations like TouchLink that are trying to sort of stamp out domestic violence. So I hope, you know, some of that, you know, gives you some context in terms of how you can help. Um, but, you know, I just, I think that, you know, ultimately, if we all try to do a little bit, um, even if it's just an hour of your day, um, manage uh, TouchLink social media, for instance, that's one way that you can help. <laughs> um, or, you know, um, you know, connecting yourself to individuals um, like Esther, maybe, who, or, or like other individuals who maybe just need support. They just need someone to just sit there and listen to them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's all you need. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, IJ. That's powerful. Thank you. God bless you. And Esther, wow, what a wow. Thank you so much for sharing your powerful 
you know, to, to the courage to even share it at all. But thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for taking the time tonight. I know we went a little bit over a lot of time, but it's worth it, right? It's worth it. We are all blessed. So let's all go out there and be our brother's keeper. I share it a lot that the way my pain goes away, the way any pain goes away, is by serving other people, serving other causes. It helps to heal. So let's go out there and be a part of, you know, of, of a community or be a part of a cause 